Hello everyone. How's everyone doing this morning? My name is Gabe Mentz and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about upping your automation game with VMware's vRealize and HashiCorp's Terraform. So a little bit about me. I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Go Steelers. Uh, I tweet at gmentz and um, both a vExpert and a certified Terraform uh, expert, I guess, but probably the most proud thing I am of this slide is a founder of the vBrisket community. For those who aren't aware of vBrisket, that is a fusion of smoked meats, craft beers, and technology. So come talk to me afterwards. We can trade barbecue stories if you like. What we're going to be focusing on today is on two technology products in particular. Um, one is VMware's vRealize automation. And the second is made by a company called HashiCorp called Terraform. But before we go into the technologies, let me tell you a little bit about my cloud provider. There's my cloud. Actually, my co-presenter, Tim Borland, is not able to be with us today. But uh, this is running in his basement, believe it or not. It's a uh, three-node vSAN cluster running on some old Dell 420s, about a half a terabyte worth of uh, memory. Um, tons of flash and tons of capacity. And he doesn't even send me a bill. So uh, this is fantastic. You can follow Tim on Twitter if you'd like, or maybe you might see him later on in the conference. But uh, everything that we're gonna be showing you today is actually happening down in uh, Tim's basement over in, in the Pittsburgh area. So Tim provides me access to his environment through a couple of self-service provisioning tools. The first one that he provides me is through VMware's vRealize automation in the form of a blueprint. So those who aren't familiar with vRealize automation, it, prevents, it presents a nice UI format for your users to be able to go ahead and provision um, a blueprint in your VMware environment. So let's take a quick look at what that is. I've got a couple of videos here on what that might look like. So this is the VMware VRA login. So I'm gonna to connect to Tim's network there. If you can see that on the screen, I'm gonna go ahead and log in and I'm gonna be presented to uh, a, a stack of different things that I can provision uh, within Tim's environment. The stack that I chose is a simple Windows VM and Linux VM, both connected with NSXT. And I'm gonna give these virtual machines a little bit of memory and a little bit of compute. And I'm gonna hit the go button and through the power of speed here, let's go 30x here. Uh, I can take a, say, 10 minute provisioning job here and really kind of crunch on it. And what I have at the end of that is once it completes, look, see how that goes fast? Boom, 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 boom. And at the end of that, I have a couple of virtual machines that I can log into, one Linux and one Windows. So for those who aren't familiar with VRA, it's a really nice way to present to your users uh, a set of kind of defined blueprints. But being kind of the geek that I am, I like to operate in what's known as infrastructure as code. So rather than always having to go to a UI for me to be able to go and provision resources that I'd like, I'd rather just be able to pull up some configuration, update some configuration, and then do a deployment. And the tool that I'm gonna to use to do that is called Terraform. So Terraform is an open source tool. It's uh, created and maintained by a company here in San Francisco called HashiCorp. Um, it is a series of configuration items which allow you to create, maintain, and provision your infrastructure. And because it's done within kind of a configuration mindset, it falls into this infrastructure as code category, right? So what the beauty of Terraform is, is that I can go to anything that's a modern day API technology stack and provision resources by simply just writing some configuration items. And Terraform is widely, widely popular because of all of the providers that have written, um, all the companies that have written providers for them. 
So there's over 250 plus providers. In fact, if you can go to Terraform IO and I'm scrolling through all of the different Terraform providers here, more than likely these are things that are running in your clouds or in your data centers. And if I scroll all the way to the dot bottom, yes, VMware has written some uh, providers for me. And it happens to be some, like there's a vSphere provider, a vCloud director, but the one that I'm going to focus on today is VRA. And it's very, very simple. This is a very common example of how you can just put together a small stanza worth of code and be able to provision, maintain, and update your infrastructure. So in this case, I'm going to use VRA. Here's the code that I'm going to use. Pivot over to my Terraform video here. And so what you can see, if my zoom works here, I don't know if it will or not. Okay. I hope that's okay for you to see, but I'm just gonna go ahead and create this provider. Uh, ignore the password here, I actually changed that after I recorded the video. But uh, it's going to provision a, a Linux and a virt Windows virtual machine. I'm gonna call that same blueprint within VRA, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it what my CPU and memory parameters are there. And the way Terraform kind of works in terms of a workflow, is that you issue, it's a single binary that you download. There's, it works on Windows or Linux or whatever your fav favorite uh, place to run uh, a binary is. And you initiate this, you write your little stanza of code and then you run what's called a Terraform init. And that initializes Terraform to download all the providers that it needs so that it can actually go do something meaningful. And then you issue what's called a Terraform plan. And Terraform plan says, okay, I'm gonna go out to your environment, I'm gonna see what's out there already, and check to see what I need to change based on the configuration you gave me. And perhaps there's nothing out there already, so I'm gonna go ahead and build this kind of from, from, from scratch. And then once you have a plan in place, then you can apply it. So that's really the kind of the workflow of Terraform. Write the configuration, initialize it, plan it, make sure your plan looks good, and then perform and apply. So let's go ahead and do that in Tim's basement. Uh, I'm using VS Code here and I'm just writing, initializing a Terraform init. So that's gonna go a down and load that VRA provider or any providers that I've created in my, in my uh, configuration. There's ones for AWS and Azure and F5 and v VMware and whatever providers I wanna use. And then once I'm done with initializing it, I'm going to go ahead and run my plan. And so that's just a simple Terraform plan. And what that's gonna go do is go out to my VRA environment and it's gonna check to see if there's anything already been deployed. So it's gonna go out to that RPT stack blueprint and it's gonna say, hey Gabe, you're gonna go ahead and run this stack you're going to build a Linux VM, you're going to build a Windows VM, and these are the specifications that you've highlighted within your configuration. This is what I'm going to actually do. So once I like the plan, I can issue what's called a Terraform apply. And what that'll do is it'll go plan that information out, make sure that I uh, answer yes to go do that work, and as soon as I hit yes, it will go ahead and actually go provision my stack and we'll go provision the resources that I've specified within that configuration. So that takes a little bit of time here. Let's, um, for those who aren't real comfortable on the, U, on the, on the CLI, uh, I will pivot over to the UI real quick just to make sure it is actually working. So I'm gonna go back into my deployments within VRA and you can see now that I have initiated a deployment but I haven't ever logged into VRA in that case. I've just simply gone into Terraform. I've initialized, planned, and applied, and I never had to go into the UI at all within VRA. Very, very popular way to do things, especially if you're writing Terraform for like CI/CD pipelines or automation pipelines where you don't wanna have to manually go into a UI. Very, very common for SREs and developers to just simply work from a CLI, go ahead and initiate and get that feedback. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead with the speed of time here. Once my stack builds. Oh. Almost there. 
And what you can see is now I've the, the, the output to me, here's your virtual machine name for your Windows VM, your Linux VM, and here's how much, uh, um, how many resources you gave to it, right? So I never had to actually log into the UI except for my little sanity check to make sure things were working. And I got, I could initiate and provision my infrastructure all, all right there from within Terraform. But say they come back to me and they say, Gabe, you really under provisioned this virtual machine. How can I go ahead and make that change? So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is simply just go right through the same workflow. I'm gonna bump up my memory from a gig worth of memory on my Linux VM, and I'm gonna double it. I'm gonna give it two gigs. Uh, before I do that, I just make sure everything worked correctly. I'm gonna go back into the code. I'm speaking faster than my video. And I'm just gonna simply edit one line. So line 14, I'm gonna change the Linux memory from one gig to two gig. I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna commit that potentially into my repo. And then that's gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go through the normal Terraform workflow. Init, plan, apply. And now what this will do is because I've already got infrastructure that's been provisioned out there, Terraform is actually smart enough to say, hey, I don't need to redeploy the entire stack. All you made a change was, was, was some memory on a particular virtual machine. And so what the plan is coming back to me to show is that I just have to change this particular piece. All right? So um, because Terraform maintains state, it knows that. So then once I'm happy with the plan, I just simply go and apply that. Issue a Terraform apply. It'll go through and say, are these the changes you want to make? I'm going to answer yes to that. And then it's going to go in and it's going to go ahead and reconfigure my virtual machine. I can actually see that working here within the environment. Um, one of the nice things about VRA is you can go back on the audit trail on this and actually see exactly what changed and what got reprovisioned. So once my apply is complete, I'll give it here 30 seconds. Question. Absolutely. So Terraform is very, very popular because scaling out and scaling in is really just a matter of changing some configuration. In fact, one thing I'm not going to show here is what's called a Terraform destroy. So if you're just building like a, some infrastructure quickly to do a test, you can destroy the environment. Now use caution because destroy is, does destroy um, as easily as you can initialize, plan, and apply. Yeah. Very common practice is to actually provision this infrastructure quickly, run your tests, do what you need to do, and then initiate a destroy to clean up after itself. So now I can see that my reconfigure actually worked, and uh, I, everything, whether I'm using the UI or whether I'm using Terraform, I can now go ahead and I have complete control over my infrastructure. All right, and Tim never had to give me vCenter rights for this. He never had to give me, he, all he needed to provision was my blueprints and give me the ability to connect into, to utilize via t um, Terraform. So let me just go ahead. Uh, example of this uh, it, I thought was pretty interesting. It's kind of crazy, but it, it really hits home about how powerful Terraform is. So let me read this. Has this ever happened to you? You're provisioning your cloud infrastructure using Terraform, and you think to yourself, man, I could really go for a pizza, but I absolutely refuse to open a web browser. Well, have I got a solution for you? Somebody wrote a provider for Domino's Pizza. Yes, Domino's Pizza's website is an API-driven website. Somebody abstracted that by writing a Terraform provider for that, and you can actually order a pizza by issuing a Terraform apply. All right, and what that showcases is that as we're going and growing and having more native API kind of pieces, we can use, utilize tools like Terraform to abstract those calls, really just write a simple configuration language to go and actually execute a body of work. There's a ton of information out here, both on site this week at VMworld. Here's a couple of uh, topics that I've talked on in, on previous V Brown Bag uh, with not only Terraform, but a number of the HashiCorp products. Um, I also showcased a little bit about VMware's or HashiCorp's vault for secret management. So go check those out. 
If you do a Terraform, if you do a search on Terraform inside the session catalog for this show, here's all the different people talking about Terraform and how it integrates within their VMware environment. All right, some of these were recorded yesterday, but uh, go, when you get back home, either go in person to see these or go check out the recording. And yes, all of this stuff I do actively blog about and write about on my piece, so if you are not a coder and you're more like a Google copy-paste kind of person, that's okay. You can copy and paste the stuff off of my blog. I give you permission to do that, all right? Do you have a question here? Yeah, so that, that's absolutely correct. Yeah, this is all based on the access level. It honors the access level that I logged into. You saw in the provider the authentication that I had to provide. So I can't go destroy Tim's environment because he hasn't given me rights to do that. But yeah, absolutely, you can take, take, make use of the actions within the UI of VRA within the Terraform component as well. And that's it, question. The Explorer window to showcase the code. It's called uh, Microsoft VS Code. It's a, um, let me find it here. Where, is this what you're talking about, sir? Yeah, so go out, it's a great editor. I love it. It's uh, VS Code. Oh, and I'm done. VS Code. Thank you.